everybody, and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in the Four Keeps, Dark Star Legacy, part six of our Four Keeps adventure. Today is July 31st, 2023. We are halfway through the year, and you are loved. And that is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these games. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are being made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other but also from the community so if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk feel free to join us again at patreon.com slash indoor adventures the best way to ask us those questions that'll get into the after show join us on discord the link can be found in the twitch chat to the side or in the description or uh, of this video or audio cast down below but let's say you already support us on twitch you already support us on twitter and or, uh, not twitter i guess x Fuck it. If you support us on Blue Sky and Patreon and all those other wonderful places where you can actually find people uh, and you're trying to think to yourself, where can I go to help support this fantastic show even more? Well, guess what, Acorns? I got your back, quite literally, in fact, because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com, we got t-shirts, we got posters, we got mugs, we got crop tops, throw pillows, shower curtains, aprons, clocks. LB is struggling to put one of our face masks on to Cat Simon that has the symbol of Tiamat upon it, designed by our very own Cyberwolf 1201. All of the proceeds of our merch currently goes to support Doctors Without Borders. So if you have, uh, if you'd like to help support a good cause or possibly help support the show, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. That is indoor adventure, no S at the end, dot redbubble.com. But that is it for my opening spiel. Hey, RJ, who you playing today? Hey, everybody, I'm RJ. Today I'm playing Kalem, the Shatterkai Wizard Fighter. We both go by he, him. Hello, everybody. I'm LB Hack. I'm up, and I'm going to be playing Gwen, the Halfling Barbarian. We go, both go by she, her. Boy, I'm Cyber. I use he or whatever. Uh, I play Arjon. Arjon is a Dragon Warrior kin. Uh, he, him. Hey, everybody. I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener, she, her. Today I'm playing as Coriander, the Eldrin Paladin, uh, she, they, and he. And I am the indoor adventurer, he, him, and tonight I shall be your dungeon master. So, last we left off. I know, I feel like we say this every time recently, but it's been a while since we played. So, let's recap some of the events that transpired previously. Last time, uh, after you had acquired the uh, yet-to-be-named uh, mechanical tyrant this big spell jammer in the shape of a black metal dragon uh you were launched into hell space a space that occupies uh the area around the plain of bator from there you decided that you were going to make your way into the astral sea so that way you could actually meet up with your dear friends bill and ted who explain who exclaimed that they had a ship captain all ready and rearing to go as long as you gave the word it was at this point that you decided to stop off uh, at the Gith Yankee homeworld within the, uh, or homeworld as much as they have in the Astral Sea, where you met up with not only Bill and Ted, but the greatest spell jamming captain ever known this side of wild space, none other than Skiznabat Navar himself. Uh, Skiznabat immediately recognized the four of you from his days uh, as a flump, where he was, you know, hugged to death and then resurrected using a, uh, I believe, was it a true polymorph, true resurrection? One of those ninth level spells that Caleb had access to. It was to. a weird combination of things. You really wanted him to turn back into a human. And you know what? That was years ago now, it feels like. Uh, so you know what? Here he is having fun, having a great time. Uh, it was at that point that uh, Arjan decided, you know, he is going to go and check on Rasa while they're here and uh, asked Rasa to join you on your spell jamming journey uh, to face off against the Dark Star. She seemed like she was very on board uh, to be able to join onto your crew. Speaking of crew, 
that is the next direction that Skiznabat wished to set a course for. The named Rock of Brawl, B-R-A-H-L. Uh, as Skiznabat has, claim, uh, has exclaimed that he would be more than happy to help you out, free of charge if you are willing to assist him in getting his crew back uh, so that way he can then join you with his whole crew on this I would say naval adventure but eh, the seas of space styled adventure uh, so he is more than willing to help you out with that Rasa again joined you uh, and Skiznabat seemed very uh, taken aback that a red dragon and a lieutenant of Tiamat's army was joining him uh, from his perspective seemingly at the drop of a hat I, he found out though uh, as Arjan declared Rasa his mate uh, in front of all of his friends and others uh, in presence and Rasa seemed to smile and enjoy that uh, very much now, that being said, uh, there is going to be about a five-day journey from where you currently are in the Astral Sea towards the Rock of Brawl. Is there anything that anyone would like to do during that five-day period? Uh, you do have a spell circle that's been built onto the Mechanical Tyrant. There is also a door with a silvered handle, should you so desire to use that, also aboard the Mechanical Tyrant. Uh, so if there's anything that anyone wants to do to either double back to the Material Plane, grab some stuff, go forward, or they just want to kind of figure out all of the mechanics, uh, as our previous tests uh, did show that uh you know even though you are a large mechanical ship it is possible to miss a beholder disguising themselves as an asteroid in the middle of hell space uh so anyone have anything that they would like to do during this brief stint of downtime um gwen oh. is going to ask caleb a question at some point but you can go ahead connor are we going to skip over the fact that we found out that Corey? as uh oh yeah i suppose we should bring that up the narrator said and Corey got I, married I, I believe somebody was caelan got mind fried and saw all of Corey's memories <laughs> somebody was doing something that i saw a couple of senators doing this past week <laughs> just <laughs> incredible Who knows right now? Who knows this? Do we uh, all know this? I believe Caleb does. Caleb said it in front of all of us. You got married? I'm sorry, With what? Out us? I... Well, maybe there would be a ceremony for friends later, but yes, Olivia and I did alone. Oh, well, as long oh. as we're invited to that one, we're right. Oh, uh, congratulations. Congratulations. Did you tell your mom? No. And currently I'm on the run from her, so nobody else do that. Wait, why are you on the run from your mother? Because she wanted to plan my wedding. Does she know? She probably does, but there's very little that my mother doesn't know. Your mom scares the shit out of me. Yeah, that would explain the very deep-seated fear that I'm currently feeling about her showing up in the Astral Sea, commanding a veritable armada of ships screaming, Coriander! Well, oh. if she comes this direction, then she's going the wrong way. So let's try and tie her up as much as possible. Not physically, not literally, just, you know, <laughs> her time. I just, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I'm not fighting your mom. She scares me. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure that was in one of one of our contracts. Exactly. Um, sorry, Corey, but if your mom does show up, you're going to have to fight her one v one. I knew the risks. <laughs> so how was it? Was it like just you and and Olivia and like someone else, or did you? Just... Well, I guess she's a captain, right? Oh, I don't really know yet that was um my spring self and they're on honeymoon right now so maybe later so 
Okay, so you're just... Uh, what? Your different seasons are mm -hmm. having different life experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like you have multiple people living in your body at the same time when they all come back together, right? Wait, I think oh. I know where she's going with this one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Is that... Does that sound right? Um, not necessarily. It's, I mean, it's all me. Right, but are you experiencing that as well? Experiencing what? The honeymoon. Oh, no, not yet. The best, when I, but when you... When I reunite with my spring self, then I will catch up on all of those memories. Ah. Um, that's why we're having this conversation to begin with, is because Calum, I think got some second-hand memories off of my summer self. Would you say that's right, Caleb? More or less, yeah. Caleb, Not... as Corey says, this visions of ground that feels like fur assault you as you remember your time on Bear Island. Well, Corey's time on Bear Island. Yep. Mm-hmm. Summer Corey punched a bear. They deserved cool. it. No. No, they didn't. Summer Corey would disagree with you. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go with, you know what? I've got multiple people living in my head. That's enough chaos. I don't need to understand what's going on with you. I'm just happy hmm. for you. Well, it's still all me. And it's not different people it is just it is just me okay. i'm just in multiple places at once like caleb was no i that i would say that that is also a separate different. occasion okay right there's no one like me is all i'm is what i'm getting at right yeah i mean we're all unique all right high five big guy hey yo just gives a high five. <laughs> There's just one waves her hand in front of her head. <laughs> I feel like when your hands, like when Grayskull's hand touches yours, he just audibly clap. <laughs> That's yep. adorable. Sounds right. There is a phantom thunder like rumble. <laughs> no, it's just a. <laughs> That's all. You... But with one hand, it's the sound of one hand clapping. It's true. Deep. All right. Yeah. Hey. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, you said you. I was gonna say, before they started talking about this wedding thing, you had a question for the, the smart boy, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 Caleb. Ah. Uh, so I have a lot of things that I can use, but I can't use because they need to take up brain space. I guess is more like magic space in my body. Yeah. Is there a way I could get more of that space so I could use more things? Ooh, nothing with a quick fix right now. Um, we got five days. That's not quick. That is a lot less time than I normally can work with, but I mean. <sighs> what if we just plug like an extender into one of those spaces and then have three more on top of that? Caleb. Casts his new spell, Kalim's convenient chalkboard. <laughs> Daedalus's disastrous daisy chain. <laughs> Daedalus, he flew too close to the sun. <laughs> so, you see, magic items take up a little bit of your energy every time you kind of uh, equip them to yourself. Everyone can mostly handle about upwards of three. There are some people that could do four or five, but that's after, like, years of training. Okay. I don't have anything that might be able to accelerate that unless you want to take a couple of years in the Feywild and then we could rework you. I've already cracked this nut. There's three of me now, so I have split up all of my magic items amongst all of my other seasons. Well, we can't really can do that. Can we bring with... Grey Skull back to life and he can do it? Oh, holy shit. That would be incredible. 
But then, like, I wouldn't be living up here with you. But you'd be, like, outside talking to me all the time. Well, that's true. Uh, if I could get my hands on a, well... Caleb just crisscross applesauce is on the deck and looks over to Gwen. All right, Gwen, I need to ask Grayskull a couple questions. Okay. Did Grayskull die of old age? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Is there any part of Grayskull that would probably be still around? Like maybe bones? Uh, probably no. Probably no. Yeah. Okay, well, if I could get my hands on a true resurrection spell. Oh, that sounds like super easy. Yeah, he says it sounds super easy. He's like magic and stuff. He could do that. Yeah, he's magic. So, yeah. I want to feel grass in my feet again. Or yeah. maybe. He, look, he has that Ooh. look like he's going to try mm. and like, possess me mm. or something. Oh, yeah, but well, now we're not going to have that. I need to talk to Corey's dad. Excuse me. Oh my god, are we going to full metal alchemist this? I just saw the look in your eye and that's where I think you went. <laughs> Yudlon, hi, this is Calum. I need you to make me a body. First off, out of what? Secondly, for who? There is a long conversation of Caleb and Yuglon just talking about making a adamantine like robot. Now, Caleb, you also realize that there were Warforged in Vascor. You know True. of mechanical bodies. True, but Warforged are their own thing. And my idea is to use Soul Cage on gray skull and then shunt it inside of this robot body do you have soul cage i do okay that was the one spell i was gonna use to fucking what was it the pirates i was gonna take oh. one of their souls and then like question them this seems significantly less icky than doing that but i'm here for it yeah i think you glon i mean there was a very there there was a uh what's it? Someone walked in on Caleb wrapping a chain around a tome oh, that as was part of the true. soul cage yeah. uh component. And we're all like, oh no 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little too dark, Caleb. <laughs> um Yeah, I think uh with Yuglon, I mean it would either take him the better part of a month to do it like what from if, scrap. What if Caleb what if Calum helped him with Fabricate? If Calum helped him with Fabricate, you could cut that down in half. Uh, alternatively, if you brought him like an empty Warforged or something to have him rework to be fueled by that soul cage, <gasps> then yeah, he could he could probably do that in the next five days. Yuglon, how's your giant spider? <laughs> uh, the giant mechanical spider that uh, he was working on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that thing. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. Um, With the no, no, not not for Connor. Okay. <laughs> uh, what if we use parts of that? Oh, we could. If you want them to be more, do you want them to be humanoid? Is that what we're going for? Yeah, I was planning. Is that like a make so or break. Gwen has this tribe of Goliath spirits living within oh, her right, yes, no. brain. I've heard of them. I guess, and like, we have the idea of kind of. Ooh. Hmm. Her runt axe can summon them corporeal for a few minutes. Okay. So what if we made a mech that could channel that? Like all of them. Like all of them. Okay, calm down. Hold on. Well, I'd have to convert with people if they want to know, if they want their own bodies and stuff. Well, Grayskull, I... you want to fuck shit up with your tribe? Yeah! All right, no, I, have, yourself. I, I, I do have a question. I have a slight question. Um, now, this may be as a result of being in the hills, probably a little bit too long. My morals have gone a little gray. Uh, now, the real question is... From being in the hills? If you power 
a ro a, a mech a mech right it'd have to have an additional pilot it's not a, a robot uh, it's not a warforged greater automata uh golem style creature now if you had one of those and it was being powered by the spirits within the axe do those are those spirits expendable is this a like they are consumed oh, that's a good point uh look i'm just trying to be above the board because i can get this done really fast uh if they don't need to stick around uh we've seen how the hellfire engine works uh, mm -hmm, we have some mm -hmm. base schematics brought up. We could try, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, uh, you know what? Let me confer with Gwen. A... Yeah, yeah, no, do your thing, and do I'll get thing. back. I'm gonna start to working you. on this. It's a, it's a, it's a fun idea. Cat, my dear, we have a new project. Uh, and Yuglon is like, does not uh, communicate after that point. Yeah, uh, Caleb just slides into the room uh, with Gwen in it, and so good news, bad news. Okay. I get robot good news, hands. You, c I can't hear that. I know. Uh, so we could technically bring them back in a more mechanical form, so they can fight with us more or less indefinitely. Bad news is their souls would feed the machine, ergo slowly dissipate into the ether and therefore never to be used again. Yeah, I don't like that. It's no, we don't like that. the equivalent of true death. Oh, fuck no. No, no, no. Why no, no. would I'm... you think that? I Look, if I leave this axe, I am going to use God and I am going to party with Talos. Yeah, oh my gosh, he's so cool. You saw him. Right? Oh, he was amazing. He cut you so deep. And oh, I'm like, he pretty took out my sure eyeball. <laughs> if your spirit is expended this way, you're not going to go to the place of your choice. Yeah, yeah. In okay, fact, okay. I think you might be revived as a Lemur in the River Styx. Uh, I, don't, I really don't want any of yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think he can swim. Um, I don't. Rightfully, I don't know if I can swim or not. It's been a long time. I mean, a lot of it's just like fighting the water to see where you need to go. It really is. It really uh, is just okay. fighting the water. What if we got them to haunt the armor? Wait, I have an idea. He's got an idea. Hold on. All right. So, like, you know how you hugged that man to death and then Kalen brought him back from like yeah. being a near ghost to being a yeah, regular yeah, yeah. person? Doesn't he have a thing where like if he focuses really hard on something for like an hour, they just turn real? Oh, uh, do you have a thing where you can use your imagination really well for like an hour and then it just becomes true? I mean... That's a very broad way of putting it, but yes. So we're like, why couldn't we do that instead of risking all of this soul nonsense? Yeah, that's I'd rather like, like my idea. soul. I like his soul too. I'm sorry, this Eric's... is a one way conversation between you and Grayskull. You're gonna need to Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh we, we want to keep his soul intact. Okay. He's my best friend. You can't do that. Yuglon X Nay, they want Good the souls. You, I know, I want souls too, and there's a great deal on the market right now. I've got to talk to Corey about this. <laughs> we could try it. We've had five days. Well, let me let me have a conversation at a side with Gr just a conversation with Grayskull before we get into this, because that's a big step. Yeah, I'm going to have a conversation about Corey's dad with Corey and trying to get them out of the hells for a while. Hmm. Kind of reacclimate to being a fae instead of... Bye. Hi. Corey! Hmm? Your dad's become the grim fucking reaper. Uh, rude. <laughs> Don't talk about my father that way. No, I'm very serious. He wants to use souls as an energy source for these mechs that we were talking about. And then the conversation well, carries. Yeah. Does it eventually <laughs> go back to that this was not Yuglon's idea to start? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Level 20, folks. Uh, Yeah, Arjan. Just hanging out with Rasa. Having a good time. Yeah, we've got five days to roll. Hell yeah. Um... Yeah, so Gwen, do you have any further conversation with Grayskull with the rest of uh with the rest of your gang? Yeah, I think there'll there'll probably be a, a town meeting. Okay. Uh, where Gwen is just sitting somewhere in this area talking to herself, basically. Uh but talking to everybody and so like the, we are very powerful. This is an option that you guys could be possibly resurrected in some way. Um because you are part of the group, uh, like, this is an option for you if anybody wants to take it, either now or after the battle is done. Um, what would it, like, we don't, ha we don't have to go into it right now because this is a non-prepped thing for you. Uh, but uh, that is an option for people moving forward if they want to think about that. Well, let me see here. Um, yeah, I think, like... Grayskull's like, fuck yeah, like, I want to be a people again. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that he doesn't mind being your spirit buddy, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, he hasn't had food, uh, like tasted food in a hot minute. And the first mm -hmm. time that he got a hug uh, from somebody was Corey, uh, maybe about like a month and a half ago. So he is Aww. down to just like, like, if you bring him back to life, he's uh, he's here for it. Um uh, Jacan, uh, he's, he's fine being a spirit. Mm -hmm. Uh, same with Tandriel, you know, uh, Tandriel more so because there aren't any other lings as far yeah. as she knows. So she doesn't want to be like the, the only line. one of her kind, uh, that is left. Um, surprisingly, Salomarn, she'd prefer to just stay a spirit, you know, mm -hmm. as, as far as she, uh, is, a uh as far as she is aware she is doing her the the work that she was uh you know that she was yeah. lauded to do in life she is helping to train the next set uh the next runt chief uh the yeah. next one who will carry on the legacy of the runt axe uh hexton uh also raises his uh hand and uh, mm -hmm. would love to be flesh and blood again uh, Hexton, of course, being Hexton the Graveblade, yep. uh, the mm -hmm. one that uses a great sword instead of uh, a great axe. Yeah. Make a bargain with him. <laughs> Make a bargain with him. <laughs> yeah, he'd love to be flesh and blood. Okay. Uh, right. Caleb and, will actually uh, pop his head in real quick. Oh, by the way, if they have a chosen form they want, uh, kind of list it out for me. Okay. They could be anything they want. Oh, okay. If you want to be, well, I think being a full ling is probably more ideal than like going <laughs> human or something. Yeah. And like all of the Goliaths, there is just no. a wave of um, like. No. <sighs> oh no! Yeah. I mean, like if Grayskull wanted to be like a four-armed gargoyle, or like you know, keep their original form. If I was like a full arm gargoyle, I could have so many weapons. They could have like four weapons. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh hold on. He's having oh, a wait, moment. Wait, hold on. What if I was me, but like massive? Oh, uh, how about uh, equipment? She well emotions. endowed, I would like to be. He really wants to be well endowed. I mean, I'm sure you were fine. Like, like... A big penis, Kayla. Yeah, no, I know, but like, like, big for Goliath or big enough to kill someone? I don't want it to be big enough to kill somebody. I just want, like, people to say, ooh, that's Maybe impressive. Maybe a lot of blood loss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just impressive. All right. <laughs> Make him pass out, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, Hexton just says, uh, like, you could just leave me the way that I was. Uh... We'll have to describe that because he doesn't actually know. Well, I guess I could, you know, bring you out and show him. 
every time you bring him out, doesn't he need to add a name to the blade or something like that? Not every time. It's sort of like a Muramasa situation where once the blade is drawn, it needs to drink blood before you put it away. Is that true? Or is it Masamune? I can't remember my lore. No, Masamune is the good sword. Muramasa is the bad sword. Yes. I, um, I don't know what he's talking about. So his is that uh, he is not necessarily uh, akin to Talos or the Raven Queen, uh, or any of the more positively aligned gods of death. Uh, it seems like he was working for, I believe, Miracle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, their grave blade has a list of names on it uh, that when they finally uh, strike a, uh, a defining blow, their name goes on to the headstone blade. So it doesn't always need to drink blood, but it is heavily implied that he enjoys shedding it. It's a little bloodshed between friends. <laughs> Anyways. Grayskull, do you want to come out n now, or do you want to wait until after the fight? Uh, um, well, uh, if I came out now then I could help you in the fight with, like, Wait. actual weapons versus it, that, like, you could, like... You know what? You could tell Grayskull they clothes. can come out whenever they want. We're here for them. Okay. And, um, like, I could have my own axe or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but not mm -hmm. an axe like yours, although technically right, that right, was no, my just, axe at one point. I, but like, yeah, this I know. Now. We'll get you a different one. Oh, no. We've got a lot of money. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I would be, I, I would, I would, you know that throughout everything, it's me and you, kid. Yeah. We could grow old and die together in battle! In battle! God bless. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm down. I'm jacked. Okay, okay, okay. All right, hold on. All right, so we're we're gonna we're gonna take today. We're uh -huh. gonna nail down the look. Yes. Okay, and then and then tomorrow, right, Caleb? Tomorrow we'll do it. Yeah, sure. Um, just describe to me what Grayskull wants to look like, and I'll sketch it out. Okay. Big steps. Just what I said, like me, but like yeah. impressive. Yeah, but four arms, two arms? No, just two, just two. Okay. Uh, you know, well, that's this is this is like getting your tattoos. You know, it's always good to give it twenty four hours to like. I know, but four arms just seems like a lot. Think of how much wanking you could do. I don't want to. Oh. Oh, and um, could you ask Grayskull if I could have a little bit of creative freedom on this one? I'll do it right. It's a, it's a body. I, what do you mean? I don't know what he means on that one. Like, uh, I just don't want like wings or some shit, you know? Yeah, no wings. No, no wings. No. no, like sorry, Dene, we gotta kick you out. Hands. No, um, uh, like fish tail. Like, I don't want to be no a reverse mermaid where it's like regular legs and then a giant trout where my body. Is top oh my god, parties. that's terrifying! It's horrifying. I don't want that. I don't want to be a reverse mermaid. Just, I just want to be just, impressive. Just him. Yeah, I mean, I'll bring him out so you can see what he looks like and, you know, like, really get it down. Hey, are you two doing necromancy in here? What? No? We're both married individuals. We do not do that with each other. What? Wait, what? I thought necromancy was a dead thing. It's a joke. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone cleared this with Arjan? Oh. Oh. Everyone hold that thought. Uh, Caitlin, wait here. Yep. Let's go to school. Let's go. Go find Arjan. Yeah, Arjan, you're just like hanging Caitlin, out. I need to call my father. Flying with Rasa, having a good time. You you know, even surprisingly, I, going into. I am in one of the rooms okay. of the ship. 
where Arjun had set up a desk. Um, Gwen leans in the doorway and knocks on the the trim of the door. Yeah. Hey, uh, I just wanted to uh, chat with you if you have a second, uh, boss man. Go on. Okay. She walks in and like sits in the chair and is like, you can see like this part of her over the desk. Uh, and she's like, uh, so we were thinking, uh, since, uh, we're going to go into a big battle and, and stuff and like, we have the means, uh, how would you feel about us giving Grayskull and Hexen bodies? <laughs> I'm told this might be necromancy. It is necromancy. Ah. Mostly because they're just like already living in my head. It, it just for me it didn't seem like that because they're already kind of alive, but they're not technically alive. They are dead spirits in my head. Are they are they consenting to it yes yeah i asked everyone and those are the two that really were, were taking up taking me up on it and you're working through the types of vessels that they will be put into yeah caleb has that thing where you can like turn like th think about things and make them real like he did with the frump guy can he can he do that with organic material i mean he did it with the front guy i don't i mean I, I, if you're asking me about the technicality of it i have no idea but if it is possible expensive is it gonna be huh how expensive is it gonna be Oh, uh, that is a good question. Uh, I think it's free. Yeah, well, Grayskull <laughs> thinks it's free. I don't know how much that helps. Well, um, that sort of resurrection gets I see. Costly. Like money-wise or like Spiritual. like diamond wise but it's okay, not right. like a resurrection-y thing right like he's right. gonna like uh, it's not true yeah, poly not, pump us or something yeah yeah it's not the it's not the true resurrection cleric -y thing it's the it's not the poly what was it it's um um like honest poly fish all is poly pompous It's not that, is what I'm saying. You know, when he, like, turns himself into a big old worm thing. He always how, says that. How many, how many people are we planning to do this for? Will they require weapons, armor, yeah, yeah. food? Uh-huh. Well, I, uh, yes, and yes, I, I don't, great. Uh, Hexen, do you actually, I... I feel like once you get your form, you're just going to check. You know, like, you're just going to go. I'll stay. No offense. I'll stay around. You'll. S Hell yeah. He wants to stay. Do I have his blade? Uh, no, you do not. And that is the most yeah. alarming thing. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, I, oh, I'm a little, but it seems uh, I like, think... it, like, from what you're understanding, Gwen, his yeah. blade is tied to his spirit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Hexen probably won't need a weapon because he has his one that's tied to his soul. Uh, but Grayskull will need to be kitted out. Uh, I mean, he won't need, like, armor or anything like that. That's for wimps, but yeah. no offense. Yeah, I mean, just not for us. Uh, he'll just need an uh, axe. And I'll give him some of my stuff because uh, that's, I mean, the whole reason that we started talking about this in the first place. But, yeah.
I want I want actual details of the plan. Before, okay, okay. Before we do it. Oh. Well, like tentatively. If the souls consent, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. So long as we're not draining my coffers for it. Right. Heard. Okay. Cool. Um. Yes. Uh. I just. I do want you to know. Uh. You will. You. You're still gonna be like my best bud. I mean, like. You can have more than one best bud. Okay. I'm not gonna ditch you or anything like that. You okay? It. I mean, I'm just just thinking about what's happened to us within the past just even a couple of days. Um. You and Philip have just adopted a child. Caleb has just gotten married to Diana. Corey's mm -hmm. gotten married to Olivia. It seems like after we deal with the Dark Star, it seems not like we're splitting the party, but we're gonna all go our separate ways. That we'll we'll be dealing with our own families. Uh, I hope you didn't think that you weren't going to be babysitting because I do expect you to babysit and teach the little guy how to fight. I mean, you're going to be like the best uncle ever. I know. But I mean, just because we have our own stuff going on doesn't mean. I mean, we have, like, such crazy magic. We could get together once a week for cards. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the reason why a house can do what it can. Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm just... figuring out what that means. Yeah. Or trying to. Well, if you need help, I'm always here for you. Um, so you, you just, while this conversation is going mm -hmm. on, may have noticed, like, what is, um, on his desk, and there's just, like, a little sketch, um, of what looks like Ross's armor, um, but there is, uh, some modification to it, or, um, there's actually a couple of different drawings, like, one of them is, um, sort of like a um uh, there's like that jewelry that uh goes around like a bangle and then has like a ring around each finger and chains mm -hmm. linking them up um but that's kind of just like scratched out there's um what just looks like a, a band um like a metal band uh that's scratched out and then this piece of armor which looks like the um the sketch that he's working on right now um and each one of them has um a very prominent gemstone um in the middle with what looks like it would be um a, a princess cut diamond um mm -hmm. except instead of being either octagonal or hexagonal i don't know my diamond cuts i am sorry right. um they're pentagonal um and he's and he has some like draconic writing like off to the side uh Gwen's eyes like her nose comes over the desk a little bit and she's like what are you doing new armor designs um just brainstorming 
four. It's a surprise. For me? Oh, it I It is shall. not a surprise for you. I see. <laughs> well, if you need any help or anything like that, let me know. Give me a bit to see what comes of it. When like starts to like bouncing a little bit, she's like, "All right, okay, okay." She like gets up. Okay. She like starts to walk away, and then she comes back over and like hugs his waist, like runs around the table and hugs uh, his waist. What? 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 What are you doing? Nothing. Uh, nothing. Just no. It's cool. Just playing it cool. Ain't it cool? When, she says she backs out the door. Yeah, and as you are backing out, you hear Grace call. I mean, I I thought I was gonna be best uncle. Uh, and like oh, you have to like uh, start like no, buddy, it's oh, like ah, oh, it's a different thing. Different. You can teach him different things. He can <laughs> yeah. fly. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, Arjun Gwen you know like, how to use a starts like addressing one of the yeah. spirits. Um, at that I mean, point. Uh, I need to know how was Kalem communicating with Yuglon? Is there like do we have it's comms message. or something? It's message. He's using message over and over again. Okay. He, he would be ascending well, cuz message ascending, would sorry. be within like 250 feet. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. we'd be at the tail end of uh a conversation that Corey is having with Kalem and Yuglon at the same time. It's like all right. So I just want to make this extremely clear. When we're doing something that we're preoccupied about whether we can do it, what's the question we ask ourselves? Should we? Should we be doing this morally, ethically? Right? Both of you. Oh, to Yuglon and Calum. Yes. yes. <laughs> they're, they're like on their knees in front of Corey. <laughs> Just like, we should ask ourselves if this is morally and ethically correct. Will it benefit right. society? Oh, right. Whether it's morally and ethically correct. Yes. <laughs> you know, I Father, suppose. Father, you, be... you need to be careful. You're going to default on your contract with Mother. That is true. I uh, can't have that. Yeah, Yuglon, I kind of came up with some things that might work better than a mechanical body housed housing souls that might may or may not burn up. Well, obviously, you don't want them to burn up. I know, I know, but you know, this is that, safer and, he, like, and more Corey, sustainable. But like when he says like, and that looks at Corey, looks at Calum, would be. Bad. 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 That would be Very bad. bad. Yes, no, obviously it would be bad. It would be... Uh, more, more than just bad? Horrendous. Wrong. Morally Wrong. upsetting. To some people. To some. Most. Father. <laughs> Hotter I would think it was cool. Hotter I would think it... Hotter I would let us do it. <laughs> I wish Hotter I was not a paladin. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you, Corey? You used to be cool. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Fuck. And this is when we just play Monster Hearts. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think with that, um, with that uh, scolding, Yuglon has assured you that he will not do anything that defaults on the contract that he has with your mother. He's also going to do his best not to do things that are you know, morally ambiguous uh, and ethically uh, uh, ethically gray. He's going to try and just stick to, like, you know, doing good things. And maybe maybe it's time uh, that he took Kat uh, to the Feywild. Maybe she would enjoy it there uh, since he has his lab uh, on the Island of Spring. Just kind of leaning over to Yuglon. 
when you're done with that, you should probably talk to Oz. They're talking about adding, uh, they're weaponizing their motorcycle. <gasps> what is a motorcycle? Who is Oz? Oh, the man from the wedding! Yeah. they. It's essentially a two-wheeled vehicle that's self-propelled. Okay, okay. I'm in for it. I'm here for it. Gwen! Hey, guys. Uh, hey! Arjun, Arjun wants a few uh, details uh, about what we're doing. Uh, he seems fairly on board. Okay, okay. I have actually come up with a better way that's more sustainable for both the environment and the soul. Good. So, you know, we could probably use this as a tax write-off. Excuse me, I'll go talk to Arjun. What are taxes? Oh, you poor summer child. <laughs> Caleb doesn't even do the books and he knows. It's that thing that they tell us that we're supposed to pay to like go over bridges and stuff, but we normally just like break their knees and keep going. It's a giant like state in America. Uh, Texas. I see. I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's been a while since we played this game when we're little silly geese. <laughs> uh, Caleb is going to outline his plan to. Arjan, it does involve the use of the soul cage spell to essentially pull the spirits from Gwen into my tome for the time being. And then from there, I transfer, I transform said tome into a creature. They have full free range of will movement. They are independent of me. You can you target with soul cage? Sorry, what's up? Who can you target with Soul Cage? Uh, technically speaking, it needs to be someone who's dying, but I think I can flip it to target um, spirits does, themselves. How much does it cost? I've got the materials for it. You have the materials to do that to someone who is dying. Well, I already have the cage worth a hundred gold, so there is nothing in the soul cage spell that reads for already dead creatures. I was hoping to make it like an arcana check to manipulate it in a way where pull the spirit soul cage and then true polymorph it. It's not a concentration gonna spell. Gonna be so mad with us. Uh, alternatively. Gwen also has the ability to summon the spirits. Oh, true that. You would what happens when the, the soul cage? What happens when the timer runs out? That is an interesting conundrum, isn't it? Now the spirits would be returned, but if they are no longer a spirit, true. You know what? My plan was convoluted. Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't need to rip the spirits out of your body. You could just summon them. Yeah, good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's I can do that. gonna be a lot less painful. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> For both you okay. and Grey Skull. Okay. You know, sometimes I feel like we should just discuss this out of character. I what? agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a voice of reason <laughs> that's not among <laughs> us right now. <laughs> But I know what Grey Skull looks like. I can't get it quite right, but I think he'll be satisfied. Trust me on this. I oh um. I do. I've seen I him rip rocks I out don't. of the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. It's gonna have to be um two consecutive days. I can't do this spell more than once a day. Unless you want me to age like another hundred years. Arjan? Caleb has left the room. Oh, wow. Arjan is okay. scribbling on his desk. You know what? No, no. Before we do anything, group meeting, okay? Just to go over all the specifics that I don't understand 
but the other two will, and will tell us if it's a good idea. Calum outlines. We should do that after yeah. the break. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, it's already a break? What? Yeah. No. We are no. pretty close. Anyways, that's a, I, I, I'm sorry I derailed the conversation so completely. <laughs> I, I mean, didn't mean, but I just wanted, I just wanted an extension for my slots so the, I could use more things. The I haven't been able to use a sun, sun forger in years. The, the premise of it being Gwen uses the, what's it, the Horn of Valhalla function on the Runt Axe mm -hmm. to summon Grayskull. Yes. Which is now a creature. Yes. Calum will then use True Polymorph, which removes the essentially the uh the Valhallen warrior attribute so he doesn't get desummoned. That is correct. Now, it would not be a period of two days because the Horn of Valhalla feature refreshes every week. It takes seven days in order to refresh. Which means if I wanted to also get the Grave Blade, I would need to overcharge a true polymorph spell. Which might also have some unintended consequences. Or you oh wait. Boy. We do, look, there is no rush on this. <laughs> We've got a while. Just do, how about you do it once, see if it sticks, and then if Hexton yeah. like still really wants it, or you make Grace After Skull seeing Hexton, like, flip a coin. I I really want it to be Grace Skull because I have a great idea. And honestly, I think it'd be super cool for everyone. What, okay, but what's the idea? Let's let's not like. Let's I want to do leave. it on stream. Right. It's gonna be fine. Trust, <laughs> trust, trust. RJ, I love you so much. You concern me so often. <laughs> <laughs> trust, 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 trust. Please, I trust. I don't trust you. No, it's gonna be so cool. That Come should on. be that should be an emote. Is just trust exclamation mark, and then you can spam <laughs> trust, 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 trust. Oh my god, rate, type it up right and send it to the Right with the Master Attuner feature. That's a thing? It's a thing for monsters. Jarlaxle has five items attuned to him. Or you just, Even you know... the critical roll book that gives you one extra slide. Or you can become an artificer. Yeah. Gwen just, Gwen just gets real smart all of a sudden. All right, Miss Smarty Pants. I guess I'll become the barbarian this time. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so game plan from my understanding. Horn of Valhalla feature, create the spirit. True polymorph spirit, the end. Yeah. Okay. Essentially. Summer Cory has two free attunement slots. Anybody <laughs> want to throw some magic items at her? Does she want a rapier? <laughs> I guess she could take it, yeah. Yeah, I have a plus three rapier burning a hole in my pocket. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> awesome. Plus three. Okay. I I got that off of someone. It it's was on one of the storm crows. Is that it? Just a plus three rapier? It's just a plus three rapier, yeah. Just Those don't yeah. require attunement. Oh, Fuck it doesn't. Yeah. Work. I'll take it. Does she want an amulet of health as well? Set that yeah, HP to yeah. 19? 100. <laughs> God, I still have 177 HP as a wizard. That's stupid. Anyway. Shall we take a break and then get up to this hijink? I'm down for it. It seems like uh, now's as good a spot as any to, to you know, get go to the bathroom. Uh, oh, I also that? give Summer Corey the Band of Loyalty. <laughs> Are you proposing? <laughs> oh. Proposing a few things. I'm proposing a few things, yeah. But, again, we the are... The Corpse Bride. <laughs> Oh uh, <laughs> Summer Corey, can you say all crows fly free? Jesus Christ. Why? We're going to try I... and be back in five to ten minutes. Don't I was no here place. for that. I know <laughs> what that to, means. This is to grab a food, grab a friend. Uh, possibly pick up yourself something nice at indooradventure.redbubble.com. And we'll see all y'all shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon.
<laughs> you do realize I'm still Corey, right? What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready now. <laughs> Take it away. Hi. I don't know. I'm scared. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. We just got done with our break. We have returned to the Four Keeps Dark Star Legacy Part 6 of our level 20 adventure. RJ. You go first. <laughs> no one said anything about that. I did. It said it. It said do it in intro. Hey, or oh, not. in do order. It. Okay. Hi. I'm, I'm scared. scared. <laughs> in nauseous. K. Hey. Death. 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 I am so scared. I don't know what's happening. I, I missed that part about intro order. I apologize. <laughs> it's 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 been a while. It's I think been it was a while. Like episode like ten or something that I was like, man, I love I love the I love the after the break bit. Keep this up forever. And now we're in like episode one hundred and eighty something. Y'all are still doing it. I appreciate it. <laughs> The level you remember that one week that we did not do a bit and Simon got really nervous? Yeah, because yeah. I kept going and I thought that you guys were just going to fucking come at me. <laughs> I, I think my favorite one still is where we all just left. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good one. Where we all just got up. <laughs> good times. It was. Speaking of good times, y'all want to resurrect the dead? You want to see dead body? Necromancy's fun for the whole family. So, that being said... Uh, Necromancy is how you raise a family. That's true. Uh, that being said, uh, raising a family is easy when they're all buried next to each other. Hey, everybody. My name's <laughs> Caleb, and it's time to open up some loot boxes. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, okay, so, our plan before the break that we established over the break Axe of Valhalla, bring out Grayskull. True polymorph Grayskull. He becomes a man. Am I missing any steps? No. Okay. Okay. You ready, big guy? I was born I'm ready. Born ready. <laughs> he thinks he he thinks you were talking to him. I know, I know. Okay. Pulls out the axe. She summons Grayskull. Just Grayskull. All right. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, what are the odds of this going horribly, horribly wrong? Ten to one. That okay, sounds I'm like good odds. That's like one percent. I'm, I'm just going to be standing <laughs> over here within 30 feet. Uh, Kaelin will reach out a hand and point to Grayskull. Um... All right, big guy, you're about to get a lot bigger. And he snaps and casts True Polymorph, targeting Grayskull, and the new form is a Storm Giant Quintessence. Okay. What? Okay. Remember, we fought one of these. I know, they're like a billion feet tall. They're, they're 10 feet tall. Bitch. Uh, the Storm Giant Quintessent is closer to around the 30-foot mark. The We're all to 30. on the... No, I'm vetoing this. We cannot have a 30-foot... No. We could feeding. make it... Uh, modify Gray Skull down. shakes no. his head, no. Just make it... Make him into a... And he, he says Rasa in giant, wrong kind of impressive. Could we modify it then down to 10 feet tall? He loses the legendary actions. No, just make him a just make him a Goliath. That's offensive. Instead of making it very big, make him very big. Very big. Uh, I'd have to find the appropriate stat block. Well, there will be a lot more giants uh, in everybody's D and D and D Beyond tomorrow. Yeah, I still need to order that book. We have well, to you'll determine have to determine exactly what his stat block is right now. Humanoid. Boo. Boring. <laughs> Sorry. 
Just give him a big dick. That's all he wants. <laughs> if I could give him a big dick, why can't I modify down to Storm Giant Quintessence to an appropriate <laughs> size? Because he's an all, he already has a form. Just give him the form that he has. He, so would, he, look, wants. he would look like Grayskull. <laughs> You would just be statted out as a storm giant quintessent. Yeah. If you give him lightning powers, if you're like fine, and then make him gray skull, but he can now like do lightning shit, I don't think he'll complain. Yeah, he can summon a lightning axe and throw wind javelins. This is gonna last forever, and he's gonna look like gray skull just with a bigger dick. Yeah. And lightning powers. <laughs> Will Tread he be... thunder, motherfucker. The, the, the question is, will he have a character sheet or will he have a, a stat block? Because so, if he has a if he has a stat block, then that's going to be a lot different. He will have a stat block. We can still adjust the stat block based on items and gear that he is wearing, but he will have the base stats of a Storm Giant Quintessent with several modifications to accommodate for size differences and things like that he's gonna be easier to run as a stat block 230 hp he has a fly speed okay but is he cooler than us yeah can he can't be cooler than us that's the law <laughs> knights in the HP courtyard they can't be cooler than us huh? is he bigger than me yes he's bigger than you <laughs> sorry that was a reference I'm not having fun anymore. I'd like to go home. <laughs> and if he moves extremely slowly, he can't be seen. Stuff. That was a Guardians of the Galaxy reference. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a second. So yeah, you cast True Polymorph. I feel like it's it's one of those things because like he's like a spirit, right? And then you just see like the essence opacity of, slider yeah like his opacity not even that like it's like from his fingertips down into his core like he just starts gaining physicality like it looks like it is just like little pages of a book that are like wrapping around him as this new story of who he is begins to unfold and Caleb, after you finish he's just standing there and like blinking as Grayskull, and Bill and Ted, like, walk up onto the deck and just, whoa! And they make, like, their, like, wild <laughs> stallion noise, and they're like, I didn't know that we had a new crewmate! Uh, and they will go oh. over. Uh, Bill, Ted, uh, meet Grayskull the Thunderer. A big guy! And Grayskull will grab you on the sides, <laughs> Gwen, and then lift you up. And then she'll just like latch onto his head. Yep. Just bring you in for a big hug. And he is he is crying. Oh, she's crying. Simon is blurry. I know. I don't know. The you camera's crying. Yeah. The camera's, the camera's crying. crying. All right. Uh, P POV crying. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a little weird for you, uh, Gray Skull, but welcome back. Yeah, it already feels weird. When was the last time you felt your blood? You, you know, want to see it? That's a good that's answer. That's not a question you should be asking me. <laughs> Who should I be asking? When was the last time you felt your blood? You, boys! And he points to <laughs> Bill and Ted. When was the last time you felt your blood moving? They're like, um... I don't know, we, like, exercise a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh... No, this is like different. This is, it's like there's lightning in my veins. With your new body comes some changes. Um, I, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, Caleb will use minor image to conjure a target off in the distance. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Look at that target. A point with my mind. No, make a throwing motion like you're throwing a javelin. Okay. And imagine hitting the target as you release. Wizard powers! And he throws a javelin while he yells. Wind javelin. You made him a wizard? I'm a wizard now! Uh, 
No, technically, you're supposed to be a storm giant contestant. Oh, you can make just wizards. throwing wind javelins. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can make wizards, but it takes about nine months. Is it uh, like a what? difficult spell? Yeah, it, it's rigorous activity. Oh, I'm sure. But you did this so easily. I'm sure you got it. And he like taps your taps your back. Oh, what uh, is still attached? Like her arms are on his forehead and her legs are around his neck. <laughs> and Grayskull, stomp, 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 up to Corey. Something I have always wanted to say to you. One, thank you for the hug. It was rather nice. And two, you have been an honor to fight side by side with. I know I haven't been able to actually express it up until now. But first thing I wanted to do in this new body show appreciation for my friends, and blow shit up. And uh, since I've already blown some shit up in the distance, now it's time for appreciating my friends. Goes up to Arjan. I know that you and I have not always seen eye to eye on many things, mostly me being dead and living inside of your friend's spirit uh, palace thing. I'm not really sure what it is, but... I know that you went through a lot for me to get here, and I appreciate you. I don't understand money. I hope that helps. Right. And then turns over to Calum. It is impressive. Thank you. He'll give you a big hug, oh. lift you up, and then set you back down. Okay. Uh, I know it's been a while, but please follow me. All right. He will, his hand darkens, he rips a hole and summons the curious cabin, walks inside. Come on. Okay, 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 okay. Um. I wanted to wrestle as we go inside. Oh, okay, thank God. On. Grayskull, you could tell, was uh, getting a little nervous at the thought of going anywhere without you, Gwen. <laughs> oh. No, she is legitimately strapped to his yeah, head and just, neck. Like, you can just sit on his shoulder and just See? like... Now I'm in your head! <laughs> <gasps> is that what it's like? And like, Gwen, in your mind, the rest of the spirits are just like, what is this? What is going on? And Hexton is like... <laughs> Me next. next I'm next, next in line. <clears throat> I got the fast pass. Let's go. Uh, as Grayskull and Gwen enter, Caleb will clap his hands. Uh, Reginald, bring all the ale. <gasps> oh, my God. And in your unseen servant's acknowledgement, just, yes. I know that they don't speak. I like to imagine and they do. It's a little boop, boop. And yeah, you see a door just sort of open and it is a feasting hall with like stations for 100 people set up. But if what Grayskull is picturing is correct, it is not seating for 100 people. It is a 100 drink challenge. <laughs> and oh, no. he sits down, start like takes the first sip. Just, oh, oh. No, it's been a while. It does taste good. I will give you that, but like, it's been a while. Oh my God, new body. You're going to be such a lightweight. We got to build up your tolerance. We got to build it up like super fast. Let's go. And he just starts slamming beer. Beer, uh, beer. Reginald, bring out the carbs. <laughs> and there's a, uh, yes, sir. Seems that that is the only phrase that Reginald knows. Is a very exasperated and old yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Caleb just claps his hands, walks out, stands on the deck of the ship. Well, that's over with. Um... Bill and Ted are going to, like, pass you on the way in. They're like, oh, we heard there was beer. <laughs> There's enough for 900 people in there, buddies. Have at it. And you say that. It'll just be the four of us. Yeah, you say that, and when you're like, there's enough for 900 people, they go, not after we're through with it, and then high five. Uh, they don't seem to understand the concept uh, of this cabin, but they're here for a good time, not a long time. All right, I've got an hour to concentrate on the spell, and then I am taking a nap. I feel at this point, uh, your captain 
comes up onto the deck and just I uh, there was quite a commotion up here. Is everything all right? Have we run into any pirates, clown, vampire, oh. or otherwise? What? Huh? Oh, there are many. Look, uh, what you need to know is that uh, think of a kind of pirate that you wouldn't want to meet. Uh, and they probably exist in wild space. Uh, crab pirates, uh, bird pirates, uh, vampire pirates. Uh, there was a ship of werewolf pirates that were going I'm sorry, did you say vampires? Uh, yes, I did say vampires. Uh, they actually come from dusk space, uh, which hopefully we won't have to be going near, but just in case, uh, avoid dusk space. It's a bad time. Clown space especially. You don't want to go to clown space. I've heard bear space gets a little weird. Um, or that's where everything's bears. You really just, it's a there's, strange time. There's bear space. Yes, there's bear space. That's where the bears came from. Do you, do you think that's where the bears came from? Oh, you've met, you've been to bear space. Oh, I don't <laughs> need to tell you. Are there pirates that remind you of your mother-in-law? Pirates that remind me of my mother-in-law. Well, I never married, so I don't believe so. No, just like the the vibe, you know, where they're really catty with you oh, the entire time. Plenty of pirates that uh, are catty. My mother-in-law like is that. lovely. I met her. My yes, I know my mother-in-law is lovely. I'm just doing the old umbrella thing where the mother-in-law doesn't like you. And Corey, anyway. your mother-in-law was not nice. Olivia's mom is not a good person. Well. Well, of course, but like everyone's different. <laughs> what are you talking about? Caleb's mother-in-law was a delight. I love Diantha's mom. She gives me cookies. That is lovely. I'm sure, you know, there are the Chewinga. They might have cookies to be able to give to you. Just to update you, we uh -huh. do have a new crew member. Oh, where'd you uh, find them? How cool are you with necromancy? I'm honestly, like, are you doing it in front of me? What level of dead are you bringing back? How many are you bringing back? Is uh, it going to be like a plague-like scenario? Is this ancient going to be warrior spirit that is beholden to one of our friends? They're actually best friends, and they want to help us fight. Oh, that sounds sick. No, I'm fine with that. Cool. No, I, like I said, if it's like you have like mummy rot or like uh, are infected with shadows, I'm not. Uh, let's try and get you cured. Obviously. No, it's like a sort of like resurrection sort oh, okay. of deal. Yeah, no, I well, you know that actually happened to me, uh, not too long ago. So it's most oh, you, you know, it'd be think. such a dick move. I could drop concentration right now. Why would you do that? I don't know. That intrusive thoughts. You ever have them? Oh, all the time. It is a, yeah. a real struggle to not listen in. That being said. New crew member, that's fine. Um, just, I don't know, make room for them in the sleeping chambers. Are they sleeping with the rest of us? Are they- but Did, did I own... hear you correctly? You hmm? said that it's a struggle not to listen in? Yes, it is a struggle not to listen in to your own intrusive thoughts. Oh, I see, okay. No, sorry, I thought you meant you were listening into someone else's intrusive thoughts, which no. would require a certain level of Mind reading. Yeah, I d I'm going to oh. be very upfront. I do not have that capability. Yeah. Right. It would be okay. a shame if someone were to have that capability. <laughs> no, I mean, it can be incredibly useful. Like, a detect thoughts in the right place. I mean, you can gain access to certain things that you otherwise mm -hmm. wouldn't have. Look, we've all been base level uh, acquirers of things before, haven't we? Isn't that a thing that we've all done? steal a few things for money. Corey's a paladin. Oh, ew. What? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. It's not... It's not that I don't like paladins. Ugh. And you've been lovely. It's just they disgust you. No, I just don't typically have them amongst my crew. Hmm, I see. Because it's harder to do fun skyfaring things when there is a buzzkill walking around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fine. Look, I'm Speaking your higher which, I help. Think that 
I'm just going I, to go... I think that my buzzkill aura might be needed in the curious cabin in the near future. So I think I'm just going to vacate this immediate vicinity. If Cory turns their head, there's just like a puff of raven feathers. <laughs> As Cory has, ex uh, Caleb has extricated himself from this conversation. Yeah, I think, uh, Arjan, were you on deck to watch all this? If you, if you need any healing or smiting, let me know, please. I think I may have gotten off on the wrong foot on that one. That was, a, that was an intrusive thought. Watch anyway, uh, well, uh... No, that and so out, like out on the deck, like I, I, I like to imagine this scenario where like Rasa is like, um, I assume that our ship is big enough to hold her, mm -hmm. um, and she's just like on the deck, just like curled, curled around, and then like Arjan is just like dad pose, um, just like leaned up uh, against the side of her, um, uh, just out on the deck. And sees Corey walking out of the cabin. What just happened? Um. How much? How far back do you need to be filled in? I I assume however much you would feel like telling. You seem angry. Oh well, no, I'm not angry per se i'm just a little mm, put off captain's not the biggest fan of paladins evidently why not why not usual reasons tend to be buzz kills doing things like enforcing ethics and law Do we need a buzzkill? Well, I, we might. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of doing that more often than not. Well, not magically. Not yet. This time. To be fair, Arjan, I never thought of you as a buzzkill. You're just like a little smile. But speaking of which, I may actually be needed. Um, so I'm. We'll be heading into the curious cabin and making sure that Grey Skull isn't throwing too much of a rager in there. Lady to it. So if you need anything, that's where I'll be. Yeah, and Corey, by the time that you arrive to the the fest hall, uh Grayskull, like between Grayskull, Gwen, Bill, and Ted, the number of drinks that are consumed in rapid succession is a startling amount. Uh mm -hmm. this man is drinking like he is Andre the Giant. Uh, and trying to set a world record for, like, 74 beers in a single sitting. Um, that being said, uh, there is a point uh, where, Gwen, I would like for you to make a constitution saving throw. And then Grayskull uh, will roll 25. Uh, Grayskull. So... I actually can't be poisoned. Yeah, you can just, you can drink for the for the fun of it. Uh, and Grayskull got an 18. Uh, on his drinks as well. Uh, but there is a point where when Grayskull is drinking um, that you watch as like, you'll say something really funny or somebody will say something funny and he'll go and like turn his head and just, hey, Salamadichi. All right, I can't do that anymore. Uh, and he is like in the process of like still being really jazzed, but he realized that like he's now 
separated from yeah. that inner tribe. But that's fine. He has a body now. He can do cool stuff. Like eat and drink and have friends. Yeah. I I hope it's okay. I mean, I just don't want you to feel like you're, you know, you're not alone. You can hang out with me as much as you want. Oh, yeah. No, Um, I would actually, um, I would like that. Uh, I don't recall the last time I have um, been alone. He has separation while. anxiety. You're like, you're like my comfort chieftain. Yeah, yeah. of course. And right. if you want to talk to anybody else, I can um, relay messages. Well, it's not the same because like Jakan would like, he would do this thing where like he's, he's like raise his voice really high and like he would like make fun of some people. And then, you know, like, like Tandrio, she would tell the story about the little wooden boy who couldn't stop lying. And she was the only person who could do the wooden boy voice. Oh. I mean, I could, I could. Hi, I'm Corey. It's not Anders. the same. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm the paladin of the group. <laughs> I'm the bar scale. It's just. You know, oh, hi, Corey. <laughs> Hello, Gwen. And like, Corey, hi. you can see that like Gray Skull's looking a little dour. <laughs> like, as you enter into the room. Oh, Grayskull, what's going on? Oh, it's... If you what's could wrong, make buddy? the sound of a little wooden boy who couldn't stop lying, what noise would you make for him? Well, why can't he stop lying? Well, it's like a curse or something. I don't know. Like, his nose grows oh. when he can't stop lying. A curse that makes you lie, even to your friends? Yeah, or something like that. No, no, but no. Like, it no, like no. changes You're not his telling physical the story. appearance. You're not telling the story right. Whenever it's like a um a like a tell when he lies, his nose grows. You oh. know, like when Caleb lies, he gets all like twitchy. Well, it doesn't sound very realistic, but I can give it a try. It's not about the um, realism. I just need you to sound like a little wooden boy. I'm a little wooden boy. It's not I'm the same. Sad. It's not the <laughs> same. <laughs> He like grabs a piece of chicken and just starts eating it. Oh, uh, hey guys! By the way, um, if you have any descriptions needed for Hexblade, um, why is everyone down? Hexton. I don't. I don't know. Just feeling really inadequate for some reason. Uh, Caleb, this place like resets when you conjure it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Gwen picks up a chair and just smashes it on Grayskull's back. Hey, what the <laughs> shit? Bring it, motherfucker! <laughs> and at that point, he forgets about his own sorrow and is just all about beating the shit out of each other. Corey like sits down it. and picks up a drink. Yeah, Bill hey, and Ted will like. I'm a buzzkill. <laughs> what? Gwen is you? not drunk. <laughs> Neither is Grey Skull. Can I can I possibly uh summon my summer form? Yeah. Separately. I think I'm gonna do that and let her babysit. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right, so uh, Summer Form's version of babysitting is jumping into the brawl. Absolutely, uh, it is. <laughs> and when Bill and Ted see that a third person has entered into the fray, uh, they sort of, like, look at you, Calum, and, like, look over at the uh, look over the fray that's happening. And, like, you can s see that, like, they're getting... Like, Calum walks fancy. over, grabs two chairs, and hands one each to Bill and Ted. All right, go on. Sick, thank you. Uh, and they will just like, they stand up and Calum, as you watch, they like look at each other with the chairs. All right, on three. One, two, and they hit each other with the chair <laughs> and just knock each other out. <laughs> like it is just one hit, they both go down. That was not what I was expecting. 
Yeah, it seems that you need to have uh, a significantly higher strength to bust a chair uh, in a single throw, and they did not. I should have made them break away. <laughs> Corey! <laughs> Caleb will lift both Bill and Ted and just jog out. The wrestle ensues. Oh, oh, those, those, are, those are dying people. Yep, they're knocked out. Corey! <laughs> Healing word. Oh. Healing word. Uh, oh, no. They can use reactions to attack me now. <laughs> I think they both just... Uh. Hey, buddies. Wild stallions. Yeah. I'm going to take you downstairs so you can take a nap. Well, I'm going to check on you, too. No, it's all right. Like, I can, I can feel it. I only, there's only a few that are broken. Uh, like no more than usual. Oh my god. Yeah, so you take them below deck to start the repair process. By repair, I mean medical. I let Oh, we don't even have the doctor you yet. You don't have a doctor yet. That is correct. You are still about we'll say at this point you're about 2 days away uh from the Rock of Brawl. The brawl's happening on the ship. What are you talking about? It's true. Uh, so, everything uh, goes off without a hitch. Quite reasonably so. Uh, it seems that um, uh, Skiznabat, uh, fearing that he may have uh, uh, said something untoward to the paladin, uh, specifically an ew, uh, at the initial state of, I am a paladin. Um, I think he would approach later, uh, Corey, and just like, hey, um, so you know how we were talking about, like, listening to intrusive thoughts and how I try not to listen to them a whole lot of the time? I feel like I listened to the wrong one at the wrong time. And it's not that, you know, I, I feel like I, it's not that I, um, Paladins and I don't see eye to eye very often. Not saying that you and I don't. We just haven't really had a whole lot of time. What I'm saying is, hello, my name is Skiznabat Navar. I am your conscripted captain. Um, and I'm sorry. Thank you, Captain. And I don't call people that lightly. Well, but in this case, I... Arjan, I was hired to be... Mm -hmm. That's my title on the... I mean, you can... It's fine. I, I'm... I don't know why it is hard to... This is... Um, you know what? It's like, stops him. Hi, I'm Cory. I'm a paladin of Coralon and the Kaelin of the Fallen Leaves. It's nice to meet you. Are you from... Feywild? It's, it's not really a space, is it? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's more a plane. This is one of the few places I have not been. Well, I recommend visiting it sometime. I will take your... You know what? How about this? Let's do this whole Caius thing, wrap it up, and then you take me to the Feywild and show me what good time a paladin of Coralon can offer. And hmm. I am willing to rethink some previous biases I might have towards paladins. Well, you're not the captain I would rather show a good time. But if you're asking, then perhaps. No, not like that. Gross. I learned about that in the HR meeting. <laughs> no, I'm meaning as f friends. That That is what I would like to be able to call you. That's what I'd like to be able to call all of you on the ship. You've all been plenty kind and helpful, and you let me... Sorry, 
What? I didn't mean to imply anything else. Yeah, friends. Yes. I, I will accept you as a friend. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. I'm going to go back to flying the ship. I feel like this is an Don't awkward be so scene. Ups Don't be so uptight. You're acting like a buzzkill. <laughs> she just leaves. <laughs> he will like to sort of... Uh, 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 and then he'll go back to piloting the ship. Now, at this point... When he gets on the deck. Yes. Oh. Uh, Arjun has cast great invisibility on himself in preparation for this. Okay. What could this be? No, Take the shot. It's bad. Yes. To whoever's out there. Oh, I mean, it sounds like Arjun. Okay. Yes, boss. You may be the captain here, but please do not insult my friends. Again. Wouldn't dream of it. He will drop greater invisibility, um, revealing Arjun in full adult black dragon. Um, just on the, on the deck of the ship, just like sort of gripping the sides of it. Good. Boss, I have a, I have a question. Can you all do that? Is this something that I should be aware of? I'll let you think about it. Can do. I have time for lots of thoughts. Lots of thinking. Um, He'll let go of the ship. Fly off. And skizzing about, it's like, there's a adult black dragon. Okay. Adult red dragon. Okay. I'm in a metal dragon. All right, that's that's three. <laughs> Caleb walks behind Skiznabad as he's, like, leaving the... I used to be a lich. You are all impressive. I will give you that. You brought a ancient warrior spirit back to life like it was nothing. It only took you like an hour to figure out. Well, yeah, we're kind of used to it by now. God, I miss adventuring. Tell me that again after this adventure. Easy. Done. All right. If you say so, space worms. They're space worms. <laughs> yeah, and I would say that uh, over the next two days, as you are all making your way to the Rock of Brawl, uh, Grayskull uh, does not leave your side, Gwen. Um he is, uh, there does seem to be a, a bit of separation anxiety. He doesn't necessarily uh, like being alone. Uh, and he prefers to be in your company. Uh, oh, yeah. Which, you know, you're used to having Grayskull around all the yeah. time. Um, it's just strange that, like, other people can see and hear yeah, him and now. Yeah, and interact with him. Yeah, and interact and, like, yeah, he's he's like he's there he's happy and i think gwen there is a there's a, a a strange sense for gwen out of the out, out of the group leading to the rock of brawl and i think that you you would all like once it is on the horizon um what you see before you is essentially a mile long hunk of rock that has been cut to a flat surface it has buildings it has ships that are flying down and landing to it there are space whales that are just sort of like careening off around the sides making their space whale sounds there are like on the mm -hmm. bottom part of this giant rock there are these large what look like almost mechanical wings to help stabilize it and you can see like there's even like there's greenery. There's a lake. There is an entire society 
on this rock in the middle of space. And I think the thing that is so poignant for Gwen in this moment is how far you've come. Not that the others wouldn't have the same kind of understanding, but with Grayskull there, when you started your Goliath journey, your destiny before mm -hmm. that was to live in Greenreach, never travel outside of Greenreach, probably to die in Greenreach to start a family and since the day that you allowed yourself to be quote unquote kidnapped by Goliath you have taken your destiny in your own hands not only did you live the Goliath life you lived it so well that Goliath spirits told you that you were the true heir to their weapon not only did you live it so well, you became the chieftain of a tribe. You fought one of the gods that the Goliath tribes worshipped to prove that they were a false god, that they were not the Raven Queen, that they anticipated them. You got married. That's, you know, something that you kind of thought was going to happen, maybe at some point, if it ever really worked out. And it seems like it's working out relatively well. But you are now in a spaceship that is made to look like a metallic dragon that you launched from the hells to fly into space, to land on an asteroid city, to gain a map, a sense of bearings, and a crew to fight against, effectively, an eldritch god. Mm -hmm. And I think that the descent towards the Rock of Brawl for Gwen is that sort of, like, self-reflection of just, like, I thought, like, there's no way that any of this mm -hmm. would ever be possible. Like, Cory, yeah, I mean, Cory's whole thing was about becoming the Kalen of the Fallen Leaves. Arjan, he's a dragon man. Dragon man shit happens to him all the time. And Kalem's a wizard. He does this to himself. Mm -hmm. But I think for what was, what could have been just a humble halfling upbringing... I think that seeing this city floating in the middle of space, despite all odds, I think that there is a level of awe that goes with that. Yeah. Yeah. Gwen, uh, like, grabs uh, Grayskull's arm and climbs up him like a tree, like, sits on his shoulder and just looks out. And she's like, oh, shit. How does it stay afloat? Magic, man fucking wizards am i right and he like puts his puts his knuckles up she bumps down oh it hurts you know, now it's fun <laughs> you know you got your whole life ahead of you now like another life you got a second chance and look how far you've come already i mean even with me i wouldn't have done any of this without you you were the first person that like i mean the other ones believed in me but I mean, you knew all my inner thoughts. You knew, like, where I came from and what I did. And you're really, I mean, you've been there for me the whole time. And I'm going to be. Of course you are, buddy. All I knew was a valley. It was a big valley where I fought some shit, fucked some shit up. Mm -hmm. Being with you has been incredible. I've been to the bottom of the ocean. I the punched hells. I punched several gods in the face. Mm hmm This is why runts work together. This is why runts stick together. Yeah. That and like I don't know, are. your wizard your wizard friend gave like he rubbed off wizard powers onto me. Yeah. I can make like an axe of lightning now. This shit's sick. Yeah. I mean, I think that's mostly Calum, but maybe Talos did that too. It wasn't Calum, and it wasn't Talos. It was you. I am alive and breathing here now because of you. 
and I don't know if space whale is edible, but fuck, I want to eat one. Oh my god! Like, yes. what would it taste like? What What is it eat? What is like? What is the probably natural really prey like... of that thing? Oh, probably space not squids. A lot. Ah, like not a Lloyd. Oh. Yeah, no, um, it just has space squids. Hmm. I don't know what that is. That sounds fucking terrifying. Uh, did you check, by the way? Impressive. I would like to remind, True Polymorph doesn't give you gear, so he's been naked this entire time. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> right. We got right here later. Yeah. This is placid. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. I mean, is there any... You should start making a list of things you want to do now that you're out. Oh, I've heard about that. It's like, uh, what is it? A bucket hat list. Yeah, bucket hats. Yeah, like... Those are cool. Like, you put on the hat so that way your head doesn't get burned. But you only do that when you're relaxing and it's like your top list of things you want to do when you're, like, relaxing all the time. Okay, we'll get you I a want to go hat. fishing. I want to go fishing once. Okay. Like again, I don't I th know. Have the maybe fish aim changed? a little higher, my dude. We what? punch gods. Hey. Why well, can't I want to go fishing? I'm not All saying right, I'm tired know. of punching gods, but I mean, there's like high stakes and then there's low stakes. And I think finding enjoyment in low stakes things is just as uh, valuable a pursuit as finding enjoyment in high stakes things. All right. That, okay. like, don't the risk of me dying me. in this fresh ass body is significantly less that and like i'm not gonna go fishing with like a reel i'm gonna go fishing with lightning and see like how many fish i can get all at once yeah that's such a good idea it's a great okay, idea right. right like feast of fish all right okay good call i wish we could like capture this moment you know doesn't your friend like can't he like turn like little like glass bulbs kill him kill him throws up a glass orb it already has them inside of it. <gasps> How did you put me in this? Well, I'm giving you shit. I know it's wizard powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, speaking about wizard powers. Hey, Grayskull, um, hey. doing some research. Uh -huh. You can fly. What? What? Yeah. All right. I've heard about uh, flying before. And he goes to the side of the tyrant. Oh, no, 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 Basically, no, 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 no. just have to fall and miss, right? It, it, wait till we're on the ground. No, no. Let it. Let, Let him cook. learn. <laughs> Let him go. Huh? Oh. And then I turn my head. <laughs> Grab I don't like this. <laughs> okay, I don't like flipping I don't. around. <laughs> Flying sucks. <laughs> Flying is bad. Oh, <laughs> Caleb's gonna hop down there, tap Gray Skull, and then dimension door them back onto the ship. <laughs> oh god, it's been like it goes to the edge of the tyrant. Just <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's in the face again because <laughs> of the gravity flux. <laughs> and he just turns back. I hate having a body. I thought it would be cool. <laughs> Press the digitation. I haven't thrown up if at least a thousand years. It's bad time. I forgot yeah. bodies do that. It feels bad. And your diet has been mostly meat and ale. Oh. Oh. Okay. Flying sucks. Flying's bad. No, the Graceful, there's a, again. there's a there's a field around the ship that keeps you drawn to it. Oh, why so would that why... be a thing? So, so you don't die. Summer Corey, or as I've been thinking of her in my mind, cool Corey, uh, was sitting on deck with like a magazine and a cigarette and was like, ah, <laughs> shit, and like gets up <laughs> to go and help. No, I'll try flying, but like solid ground. It is not just falling and missing. Because I was missing for a while down there, and I never gained control. Is that a rag? Like, wipes his face off. Thank you. <sighs> All right, let's, 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 you know what? I'm sure there's a lot of cool food on the ship. Let's try out some of that. 
okay. gotta get some more food in your your little tongue. I think it's about average. He says holding well, his mean, tummy. Okay, all right. Come and on. yeah, y'all go. Holes in the ear. The yeah, and as uh, as the two of you are going down, uh, you hear over the intercom system just. This is your captain speaking. We are going to be making our descent onto the Rock of Brawl in the next hour or so. Uh, we'll take uh, a little bit of time to get down there, probably no longer than about 45 minutes to an hour at most. Uh, when we arrive, uh, I will do our best to try and uh, land us in a uh, more reputable port. Uh, of course, Unfortunately, I do not believe uh, much of the city is sized to accommodate certain passengers that we have aboard. Uh, I would request uh, that uh, uh, Rasa uh, stay back with the ship uh, as a form of protection, because most people don't fuck with red dragons on the Rock of Brawl. Uh, thank you so much for your understanding, and have a safe flight. He has a really pleasant speaking voice. Yeah, I was about to say. <sighs> it's like we're dealing with a toddler now. Oh, is he coming with? No, Grayskull. Yes, no, is he coming with onto the Rock of We Roll? do need to get him clothes. Shouldn't that be a reason we leave him behind? <laughs> Yes. Oh, well. Mm. Don't worry. Uh, my summer self can take care of him. Okay. It sure is great to have another me around to do all the chores. <laughs> That's <laughs> busy work, Corey. I'll bet that my embodiment of rage won't hold it against me at all. No, I'm sure it's fine. Rage against the Kalen. Just next time we see Summer Corey, they've got like sunglasses and a leather jacket. Just like, motherfuck. <laughs> the fruit's about to go bad. Corey, stop smoking. You're not in control of me, Corey. Maybe if you put me back in my real body. <laughs> Flicks cigarette away, takes another one, lights it with their hair, and then starts smoking again. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, as you sort of like tell other Corey that hey you know maybe uh you stick behind with gray skull they're like i suppose um but if he decides that he wants to get up into any rambunctious uh adventures or anything like that um you know it would be nice to have somebody with a level head around and uh i think at that like point you. uh I don't know, I can be kind of a wild card sometimes. <laughs> Come on. Not really though, right? Sure. Let's say that let's go with that, yes. Sure is great to have someone around who actually agrees with me. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Even the other aura of Buzzkill thinks Corey's a Buzzkill. <laughs> This wasn't supposed to be a problem until season two. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one last thing before yep. we leave the ship. Uh, Caelan's going to approach Grayskull. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Hey, uh, so starting out my adventure, I too was a little bit nervous about being away from everyone, being fresh as a newborn lamb. Uh-huh. Uh, so I fabricated you this, and it's just a little plush Gwen. What have you done to my best friend? What I... have they done to you? And he's just holding up the plushy Gwen. Blink I... once if you're in there. Buddy, oh, thank I... God. I no knitted blink. that. I know. It's just like you gave me a body. You've trapped her inside this wicked little doll. She's still around. Oh, That's just shit. a little doll. Oh, I... And if you squeeze her, she does a little ah. Squeeze. Ah! Oh, well, that's frightening. 
But you did this for me. Gotta make everyone comfy around here. I take back half of what I said about you. Just the bad stuff, I hope. Yeah, obviously. Oh. Cool. You'll punch Grace Gold in the hip and go, ah! Yeah, built like a rock. You should know. <laughs> I should have made you a marshmallow quintessence. What's a marshmallow? If they have it here, I will make you some s'mores. <gasps> what's that? What's what's a s'more? It's chocolate on a graham cracker with a little pillow of cloud on top. All right, I've and seen it's... y'all eat chocolate before. If you've seen some, will you bring me some? Yeah, buddy, sure. Incredible. You want some dirt candy? Dirt candy? I haven't had that in a while. In a grip? Yes, please. Oh, it tastes like clay. It's good clay. And Caleb leaves. Okay. So the mechanical tyrant descends to the Rock of Brawl. And once you are here, you can see that there are numerous spell jamming vessels that have all set themselves amongst this so-called rock. Uh, you can see that you are in the... Uh, it's around the mid area, like the mid section of the ship. It's not really by the lower decks uh, or lower docks. It's, again, more in a, a reasonable space. Uh, and Skiznabat will let you know that the reason why you don't want to go to the lower decks uh, specifically is because one of the quote unquote under barons kind of made that their whole jive. Uh, so you don't really want to get on their bad side, but. If it happens, it happens. Uh, Skiz and Bat will also let you know uh, that while you may have been a little off-put uh, with Grayskull not really having much in terms of clothes, turns out there are very few crimes that are considered crimes here on the Rock of Brawl. Uh, public indecency slash, like, just being naked, not really a crime. Seeming. Arson, more of a crime. Seeming seeming it would seem as if gray skull has clothes done should i have ask that of non-detection yeah gray skull he's more than down to pretend that he's like oh shit this is like the chieftain's new clothes scenario how many people do you think are actually just using seeming every day rather than actually wearing clothes if you say Most... that out loud while on the dock what dock worker leans in and says more than you know and then keeps <laughs> walking <laughs> oh, no, they have true sight oh hey grayskull don't turn around really fast you might knock someone out all right um quite okay question am i going with you am i not going with you are we doing new clothes is this my clothes no we're we're going to get you clothes Okay. This is for the their trip. This is for the their trip. Okay, cool. Mm. Should Summer Corey come, or should she stay behind and Summer Corey smoking ship? a cigarette? I'm protecting the ship. <laughs> isn't Does that summer... right, new best friend? And Rasa just sort of like nods and <laughs> she's nice. Where's fucking um, Bill and Ted? Oh, Bill and Ted are staying on the ship as well. Awesome. Yeah. They could go onto the Rock of Brawl, but uh, they would rather make sure that your ship is adequately guarded. Not also, that's I... less NPCs. Also, yeah. less NPCs. Less NPCs. I can't wait to see um, the uh, mini episode of them. Oh and yeah, their adventure. So, upon exiting out onto the Rock of Brawl, you had that interaction with a dock worker who sounded like raspy but like looking at them you wouldn't tell it it looks like they like are a young strapping dock worker that being said um if you would like to go and get new clothes skiznabat is more than happy to help guide you um and he says all right so uh for a fellow like him we could probably go to gift town uh, and they might have uh, something fancier if you're looking for something more um, gilded. Uh, I know a couple places that we could try and find something uh, of the more magical persuasion. It has been a while since I've been here, though. Um, 
you know what? There's actually a pretty easy way. Uh, oh, how long has it been since you've been here? Well, I was a flump for the last five years. Uh-huh. So... Were you, were you here as a flump? No, yes. I was. I think the last time I came here was about two years ago. Oh, okay. It's so been it a little bit. Had... Yeah. No, well, I turned so it into it's a flump been... and then made port here. And then from there, I, you know, retired and went to Sigil. And then that's where mm -hmm. we all met. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's only been two years for it to change beyond your imagination rather than five. Yeah. So, you know, there might be like new shops, new turnover. Somebody might have gotten stabbed who didn't need to be stabbed. That sort of thing. Like it happens all the time here. Mm -hmm. uh, but cool. basically just like have the aura of unfuckwittable about you uh, and nobody will fuck with you. So, uh, have you ever been to a pirate town? Oh, yes, of course. Okay, pirate town rules. Okay. If that helps. Um, Corey, Corey squares up and looks mean. And, uh, yeah, I think Skiznavat will go over to it a little. Like, it's a, it's a marquee that looks like it is being projected, like, aether onto, uh, like, a glass plane with a little you are here. Uh, and it'll point to a section because the Rock of Brawl is a mile in like in area. Uh, and so it's fairly easy there. Uh, there are a multitude of roads, but they're all like pretty easy to follow. It's a grid based system. Um, and Skiznabat says, all right, so it looks like. Oh, good for them. So uh, looking at the board. Effectively, uh, how well a shop does puts them higher up to the top. Now, shops can do poor if people are like review bombing them, uh, that sort of thing, or if they have figured out a way uh, to, well, you know, game the system a little bit. But uh, it seems like the most current, well received shop uh, is a place called Things That Make You Say Wow. And then there is what? a place to get food. No, what did you just say? Things that make you say wow. Like literally grabs him by the lapel. <gasps> I've always wanted to go. Don't ever speak that name again. If Skiznabat looks over Corey's shoulder, Caleb is just paler white. <laughs> well, it looks like they've also franchised a little bit because the number one food place to get is things that make you say yum. Gods, no! And oh, please let us go is... see the consequences of our actions. And below that is Large Luigi's. Now, I do have to go to the Happy Beholder, because I believe that's where Robinson will be. It's where I last left Robinson, anyways. He owed Luigi a debt or two. But uh, if you want to go, there's things that make you say, wow. Uh, there and uh, possibly grab a bite to eat. I can meet you there, uh, and then we can reconvene. Let's say, um, and he will point and point and tell. He says, "Ah, Elmander's star charts. Uh, that's probably uh, going to be the most uh, reliable um, uh, shop that we have here." And you can see that Elmander's star charts is resting at around like a seventy-six out of a hundred. Uh, in terms of uh, review. Oh. Alright, so sounds like your new crewmate really wants to go to things that make you say wow. Let you go there. Oh, sorry. thing uh, Things. If I just shorten it to things, will you still be mad at me? I'm not mad at you. Okay. The grabbing and shaking really made me believe otherwise. Uh, so, uh, otherwise, you know, you're all welcome to join me at the Happy Beholder. Luigi's an old friend of mine. I want to go to things that... I want to go there. <laughs> we will meet up at the Happy Beholder. Excellent. I will go and grab us a table. The weight can be atrocious. Uh, and he will uh, point to where the Happy Beholder is on the chart, uh, on the map of the Rock of Brawl. Uh, and he will depart. Unless anybody wanted to go with him. 
Corey, do you wanna are you gonna stay with us? Or are you gonna I don't really want to see Thread Twister again, ever, if I can help it. Okay. Nope. We can go up by ourselves. Yes, but will I ever see you again? Uh, well, now I'm really tall, so probably. It's in really close. Don't let him take your blood. Looks like Grayskull. Okay. And then she hugs you like it's the last time she'll ever see you, and then she leaves. I'm gonna go with Corey to make sure they're okay. I have to see what these consequences are. And <laughs> takes Gwen and oh. uh, tries to grab onto Grey Skull, but there is flesh where he seemed Ooh. fabric. <laughs> oh, Gwen's on his shoulders. Just hold Gwen's hand. <laughs> Grey Skull is also up for handholds. Uh, if you can, tell me the consequences about things that make you say yum. That actually sounds really interesting. Grayskull will give you a thumbs up. He's like, remember, marshmallows, chocolate, if you find it. Will do, what? big guy. I've, just, I've seen you eat them, and I'd want to taste them with my own mouth. What flavors are y'all in the mood for? They Salty. come in flavors? I'm. If we go there, are you looking for something sweet? Are you looking for something savory? Umami? Oh, cheesy? uh... Ooh, if I they can... they have, go. like, a salted bean... A salted bean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just one bean. Look, I got a lot to taste. I got a lot to try. <sighs> yep. All right. So we're we're going wow and then yum. All right. Things that make you say wow. Things that make you say yum. Perfect. So. For the group, that is going to things that make you say wow. <clears throat> you go through the city streets of the Rock of Brawl, and while you're going, you can see a variety of people. This is like the city of Sigil, uh, except that like it's not donut sh donut shaped, and you can see out into the Astral Sea from where you are. Uh, there are like hippo folk that are walking around you see that there are like some people who look human but they're like a little too hairy to be human uh we would know them as shifters you see other folks that have like eyes that are made of a burning miasma one person just like does not have a face it seems like it is just smoke kind of billowing from where a neck hole would be and when they talk to people like a word bubble actually pops up next to them that then continues to enunciate they have hand they have like eyes on their hands it's very strange there's a purple guy he seems relatively normal. He's just purple. And when you get a little close, he goes, nah, and like a third eye opens up on his head and then he continues on. Uh, he will never be referenced or talked about again. But if you've seen the original D&D &D movie, you know who exactly I'm talking about. Now, you arrive to a red tent, a red tent with a floating sign that says things that make you say, wow, and the wow is blinking with little neon lights. And there is a hanging sign next to it that says, now under new management. Okay. Opens, uh, the, it swishes open the things. Yeah, there is the stairs that lead down. And as you descend into the stairs and you come to what looks to be a door, a do door is new. Door is not something that you are used to from things that make you say, wow. So you turn the handle, you push it open, and instead of a blank room with two sets of armor, you can see that there are items that are laid out in glass cases with clear pricing. There's a little bell that dingles when you enter the store. And from behind the counter, you see two people. You see a woman with blonde hair pulled back so tight that you are surprised that this like hair has not separated from the skin. And there is a man with well coiffed hair, an excellent mustache, who just seems to be sitting there. And as the three of you enter in, the woman says, hello, and welcome to things that make you say, wow, how can we help you today? 
Hi. Hi. We need clothes for this man. I believe that is going to be my specialty. Hello. My name is Bryce. It's nice to meet you. And this Hi. man will come up and he's wearing a very well-fashioned, perfectly tailored suit. And one might call it bespoke. So you, under new management, we saw the sign. Yes. What happened to, uh, what's his face? Oh, the previous owner. Yeah. Uh, well, as it turns out, um, first, uh, just a quick question. Have you seen him around lately? No. No, we haven't been uh, on a plane that there's a, things that make you say wow in a, quite a little while. Well... Should you see him again, we currently do have an open bounty for any Arillo Thread Twister that you may find. If you bring them back, we will give you a gracious discount. A discount? Not like uh, cash? Uh, bounty, please. Have, do, do you, do have, you have an Arillo with you? No, do you have, like, the paperwork? Oh, it? yes. I would uh, like that. We are currently missing five Arillo Thread Twisters. And they will bring out a stack of papers and you see that they are in like varying states of like ah, ah, like running away like and like one of them has like a, a wanted frame in front of them like a like it looks like a like a, some sort of serial number that they are holding in front of a camera these arillos were not present during joining day some of these Arillos have also committed crimes across numerous planes and are wanted for hearing. I'm sorry, Joining Day. Yes. Yeah, what's that? Uh, joining Day was the day that we came under new management. Uh, now, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the previous owners, uh, previous management, uh, how do we put this? Some of our customers believed that they were threatening. Uh, others believe uh, came across and said that they were not having a nice time uh, to appease the algorithm. Uh, the God of Merchants uh, decided that we needed to restructure. Uh, so joining day was when we brought all of our lovely little work family together uh, to create a better, more positive store. I don't Please, they this. bring them all together. Yes. What does that mean? When we say bring them all together, that means that they became part of that central family unit that we hold really dear here at Things That Make You Say Wow. Hmm. Because we like to promote fun, safe, and a little bit of adventure. Now, your friend needed clothes? He looks like he's wearing some pretty good clothes right now, actually. He's not. She, like, rubs, like, his chest and puts her hands through them. <laughs> this, this is a seeming glamour, but if you have Ooh. something that's about mm -hmm. like this, that that's sort of what we're looking for. Are you looking for any kind of uh, magical addendum to go on to that? Or just, uh, just some leathers, you know, some straps? He looks like he's a straps kind of guy. And buckles. Mm, buckles. He seems very interested in buckles as well. Uh, no, I don't think we need, you don't need magic stuff, right? Like, it's real, I got, I got the gauntlets for you and other stuff, so you'll oh, be, yeah. I think no, you'll be like, okay. If you could just have, like, a sick coat, um, oh, like some a cloak? straps. Do you want a cape? Yeah, like, or, well, not like, or, a, or like, a, not like a mantle. A, yeah, like, one of those that you wear from, like, the shoulder thingy. Oh, or, or, yeah. Or, like, the, one the side or both side. that goes um, around one shoulder. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, don't worry. We are here to help. Okay, because cool. the only things that you'll say be saying wow about are our prices. In a in a good way or a bad way. Let's get him to the, to the fitting room, shall we? Gwen <laughs> on the shoulder, just looking at Arjun, like. Uh. Go along, big guy. <laughs> He sort of like looks back and that like, what are they going to do to me? Um, and he will go into the dressing room in about like 10 minutes less than uh, he will come out. He has like a side cape that looks 
you know, like a stone gray, like a dark stormy night kind of thing uh, going on. Again, buckles, straps, not armor, but enough that like it's it's showing off all of his assets and covering his ass. And that's like the most that you can really hope for on clothes like this. Uh, all things considered, the clothes that you would be walking out of if you were to purchase this set would be 25 gold pieces. Are you looking for anything? Me? No, I'm good. I got... See, I ripped this one myself. And they not. It just... Yeah. An excellent tailor. Custom. Hmm. One of a kind. Yeah, and this is where Talos hit me in the chest and he broke me open. So I just left it and then I put... I took some string and I like... So it wasn't like exposing me. Yeah. And you see that as you're saying this, that customer service mask, it's just, mm hmm. Oh my. A follower of Talos, are you looking for a holy symbol? Oh, no, no, no. I got, I got it taken care of. And she like pulls her hair back and shows the eye. Does he need a weapon? Weapons. I mean, like, I'm fine using, uh, like, I don't know, that one that like explodes seems pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, you want the Sunforger? I mean, like, I can also like make weapons of like lightning and wind now. Oh, right, right, right. Which seems Man. wild. Buck fucking yeah, wild yeah, yeah. to me. Sorry. I, can Maybe. we swear here? <laughs> We're the customer. We can do whatever we want. Uh, no, that's not true. I was just being, don't actually do it. Uh, what about just like a normal axe? Like just a, a, like a, you know, keep something in your hands. Like a hatchet or like an axe no, like axe? like an axe. It looks like an axe, man. I'm not... Like yeah. a great axe. Yeah. A hatchet would look like a twig in your hand. Now, before we sell you this regular axe, and we could, and you would be happy with, its, with the sale, many things in wild space, as you are here currently, might have some fort. Uh, some sort of resistance to damage that is that comes from non-magical weapons. That being said, can we interest you in this plus one great axe? Now, it is a little bit of a, of a steeper price. Uh, 75 gold versus about 400 gold. Uh, but we would be willing, uh, uh, you know, to help out uh, a friend indeed. We could come down to 350. Looks at Arjan. He's he's got the lightning and stuff. Yeah. Do you well. care, big guy? Does a Honestly, graceful I'm care? I, uh, I'm thinking of it as more of a comfort object for him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would. I mean, like. Even just like a staff that I could like summon the lightning through, like a conductor rod. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. We do what, have quarter staffs of metal. Do you have any great axes with like a topaz focus? They do. That would go for one hundred gold, specifically for the topaz gem being the majority of the of the cost. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right, Karen, that looks like we got another sale. All right, thank you, Bryce. Um, oh, dear. Cool. Uh, yeah, no, if we'll keep an eye out for those Arillos. I honestly didn't know there was more than one of them. That's so weird. Oh, yes. Uh, the Arillo did lay out a comfortable groundwork for the way that things that make you say wow operates, but was deemed unfit to continue management. Yeah, man, that must have sure was. Okay. So and can we help you with anything else today? I'm good. Yeah, Arjan. Nope. Twenty-five. Okay. Sounds good. And Gray Skull, like. Oh, <laughs> yay. And he's, like, mm -hmm. doing, like, little flippies with the axe in his hands. All right, 
let you guys have a, a, a great day. Talus's blessings upon thee. Let's go. Have a great day. Bye bye now. Bye bye. <laughs> we get out of the tent. What just goes, that was fucking weird, right? Yeah. What are the Arillas wanted for? Uh, one of them is wanted for, uh, the crime of grave robbing in the plane of fire. Uh, another Arillo, uh, is wanted for, uh, it, it seems like most of them are wanted for, uh, uh, not cooperating, uh, on joining day as it is listed. Um, but most most of them seem like magical related crimes that Gwen, when you see like grave robbing on the plane of fire, you're like, that was actually me. But it seems like it got back to Arillo. So yeah, it seems like uh, maybe uh, getting adventurers throughout the multiverse to commit crimes for you to gain magical items uh, in a quicker fashion uh, is not a sustainable business model. Unfortunate. Why was she talking so weird? Why wasn't she? I mean, like she was she was saying weird words that didn't make any sense in the context of what happened. She said, "That's called jogging, and it's jogging, and it's." A way to, it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like Thieves Can't, but for corporations. Oh. So I thought weird. jogging's what you do when you don't run really fast. Yeah, it's like a medium Have runner. you seen people in corporations? I've seen your corporation. That makes a lot of sense. They do do a lot of jogging. All right, well, let's go to things that make you say yum. Yeah. All right. Next up, things that make you say yum. When you enter into things that make you say yum, it seems like it is a similar layout, although this tent, notably, uh, is more of, a, uh, more of a friendly yellow color, uh, more of like a hot dog on a stick kind of coloration uh, going on to it. And when you enter into the building, you can see the man Bryce, the woman Karen, but they are wearing more like, uh, more like food service style clothing. Is it's it just, polos and aprons? It is polos. Uh, Bryce has a little like fry cook hat on. Karen says hello and welcome to things that make you say yum. How can I help you today? We have a variety of stick-based food that you can enjoy. And Grace goes like, uh, they, uh, I don't, it's not a real dog, right? No, no, no. A hot dog is not actually made of dog. What is it made of? Legally, we are not able to tell you that. Legally, we can only say beef or pork. What we can tell you is that it is made entirely of food. Okay. Um, you were just in the other shop, right? Oh, you've come from things that make you say wow. Yeah. Did you enjoy your stay? Sure did. We didn't say wow. You did not say wow. Mm, that does not sound like a five-star review. No, it does not. Do you eat what can we stick? do to help provide a five-star experience while you are here at Things That Make You Say Yum? Make us say yum. Did you hear that, Karen? <laughs> I did, Bryce. I think that's something that we can do together. And then there's like a weird montage. Like, it's very strange watching a montage happen in front of you where, like, they'll be in one place doing a thing laughing and then immediately on another part of the conveyor belt, like, working really hard. Like, they are doing a food service experience and they set in front of Grayskull 
what looks like a hamburger that has no less than eight layers on it that has like a little shooting star that is also a sparkler on top of it set in front of him. And Grey Skull just, holy shit, what is this? Do you eat the sparkler? Who? <laughs> Come on, use your lungs. Come on, jump from the diaphragm. Blow harder. And he <laughs> blows out this sparkler. Because it seems like he has like an innate gust of wind that he is able yeah. to do now. So the sparkler goes out and just, oh, wow, congratulations. Fantastic. And Grey School look, oh, yeah. Yay. I mean, does this count as your birthday cake? Oh. It's your birthday! You and are Gwen, born as you today. say that, red lights descend from the ceiling and begin oh, no. to spin. Oh, and the forbidden Aaron lights. Turns around. Did someone say birthday? Uh, maybe? And Bryce, also slow head turning from over at like an ice cream station. I believe they did, Karen. Looks like someone's a special birthday boy. And they go in to a very happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. Happy, happy birthday. I can't continue the song because I don't know if it's copyrighted or not. Until Grayskull is sitting there like, oh, yay. Yay. Like, you can tell he's like kind of getting overstimulated from people like, very nicely clapping in sync with each other to deliver a food item. And they set down a banana split next to his large burger. And Grayskull looks at the two of you and, like, has this, like, uh, uh, and he grabs the burger and takes a bite. And the two of them at the other side of the counter are just looking. They have not blinked once in either store that you have seen. <laughs> and Grayskull. Insight, insight check, yeah. Roll an insight check. I want to, like, what I'm really trying to get is, um, like, what sort of creature are they? Okay. Um, I'm terrified if they're a construct. Um, 22. A 22. They are not a construct. Uh, that was an insight check. Mm -hmm. You can see that from the bottom of them with a 22, from where their feet are, it looks like there is like a strand of ooze that goes behind the counter, like behind the, the back paneling. You are familiar with things like this having fought something akin to them before we've we fought no blokes it's true and grayskull takes a bite and just yum there you go. that's what we like to consider a five-star dining experience thank you your dessert will be comped cool um, thank you. We'll let you know if we need anything else. Of course. We're always more than happy to help any kind of customer. Bye bye now. Bye. Bye bye. And Grayskull bye. is like eating his Sunday. Just when you get back on the street, I don't like things that make you say wow. What the fuck? I really fuck don't was like that? things that make you that say was yum. fucking weird. Their right? food is mediocre at best. <laughs> you icky look i saw a couple of spice vendors around here i promise whenever we get back to the ship i will go back to the stain and i will i'm just gonna make like two pots of pasta liar. oh god thank you we have to warn Corey and caleb we have to warn everybody <laughs> one starts <laughs> looking around meanwhile meanwhile <laughs> Over at the Happy Beholder, Corey, Calum, the wait has been about mm, 
15, 20 minutes or so. We've been standing outside with Skiznabat. And upon entering in, uh, you can see that it is a, uh, you know, it's a family-style restaurant. Uh, the lanes are very big for carrying large plates of homemade food. Uh, and Skiznabat uh, is, uh, seems to be enjoying himself. And Corey, most notably to you, Calum, as well, people don't seem alarmed at the beholder who is currently floating around from table to table until the beholder gets to your table and just says, Hey, how are you folks doing? How are you liking, uh, liking this dining experience? Huh. Luigi, you cad. And Skiznabat gives him like a friendly little punch. And just, oh, hey, oh, I didn't notice the outside of the uh, lack of little noodle-like appendages. How you doing, Skiz? Uh, I've, I've been doing well. Compliments to the chef. Ah, he doesn't need no compliments. Fuck that guy, am I right? Hey, Robinson, this guy wants to give you a compliment. Uh, and you see that there is a bugbear that, like, ha is wearing a hairnet, sleeves rolled up, apron up, sticks their head out of the window, just gives the bird, and Skiznabat gives the bird back. And then With you his see that, eyes? Like, uh, uh, a bugbear? No, the oh, Skiznabat. He's giving it to oh, Skiznabat. Yeah, yeah, that is the beholder flipping no, off. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, that's when he brings all of the other tendrils down except for the middle one. Uh, Robinson taught him that. But Robinson will make his way uh, out and just... You son of a bitch. I haven't seen you in years. And will hoist up Skiznabat out of the table and Luigi just... Ah, it's a good time. It's a good time had by everybody. You know what? You know Skiz. You know Robinson. Uh, what do you want? Pasta? We got tons of pasta here. We got all sorts of things. Uh, you want a burger? Yeah, it's a little oh. plain, but like, uh, it's not my favorite, you know. Uh, there's this thing that's called a Reuben. I don't know why it's called a Reuben, but it's delicious. Robinson makes the best one in this side of the fucking, of all the wild space there is. You know what? You kids seem like you're all right. You need water, you need drinks, you need anything else. You know Lodge Luigi. I'm in hell. Uh, and then with I... that, he, like, gives a little bit of a spin and just, hey! And, like, <laughs> goes to contact uh, a new group that has also sat down. I love him. That was, that's definitely a different experience than what we normally have with Beholders. Oh, yeah, no. Large Luigi is, uh, he's a, he's a different breed. He's a very different kind of Beholder than you will typically meet. And he's one of the best sense. bosses I've ever had, unlike this sack of shit. And uh, Robinson will, like, punch Skiznabat on, or, uh, yeah, punch Skiznabat on the arm. Just, oh, yes, no, I agree that, um, you know, we got into some rather hairy predicaments, uh, but it seems like your net is keeping most of those in check now. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Robinson just, like, folds his arms and just starts laughing. Uh, and, um... He says, all right, well, what'll it be? Is it only going to be the three of you are expecting more? If you're expecting more, I could get some wicked apps rolling up. At least that's what large Luigi's been calling them. It's short for appetizers. I was calling them tizers for a while, but he said it didn't really roll uh -huh. off the tongue as well. We also called them uh, uh, tapas, I believe is Ta another word. Tapas? Tapas. Is that like how, like a how cake wicked topper? are your apps exactly? Uh, well, what do you like? We have uh -huh. uh, uh, these new things I've been trying called uh, uh, jalapeno puppers. Uh, there are hush puppies. Uh, we have uh, you know for those of you who aren't uh, typically more of a uh, meat oriented, uh, we have uh, some mandrake uh, ready to go at a moment's Ooh. notice. Get it before they scream, otherwise the taste is ruined. Real quite. Are the hush puppies made of dog? The hush puppies are not made of dog, actually. They are uh, a little bit of onion, uh, as well as some cornmeal, would you believe it? Well, well, that would be truly wicked if they were made of canines, yes. Uh, look, that's kind of sick, don't you think? Like, I'm I, all for I do, trying I new flavors, so. but... We're going to get off the subject. I'll take right some jalapeno poppers. Jalapeno no, poppers. I mean, wicked is in evil. What do you mean wicked is in? Wicked is in... Uh, uh, have you ever seen... Uh, there's like kids on their wheelie boards 
doing like tricks and things. Uh, they're from Rad Space. Oh, oh, like like Bill and Ted when they do. Oh, the... you know the boys exactly yeah. like Bill and Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're part of the crew, but not part of the ship, thankfully. Yeah, no, they... we're over that arc. Yeah, they will not be joining us. Um, but yes, there will be a few more of us today. Um, <sighs> we would like to have a few of these wicked apps all right uh is there any sort of dietary thing that i need to be worried about uh well the three coming in all eat like the here's understood what we'll get going is a nice breakfast pile till then the name is robinson targell i will be your chef uh hopefully from here till the next hot oil. Anyways, I got customers. Uh, and Robinson will pat Skiznabat on the side, and Skiznabat just says, It has been years that he has been working on those jalapeno poppers. But I think that with Large Luigi, he'll get them right. Uh, and you look over and you can see Large Luigi is entertaining uh, what looks to be like a table full of like You've seen octopus people to a degree, but what if there were other octopus people that were mostly person and not cephalopod? <gasps> and they, Wait, instead are they of pretty? hair, yes, they are. They are all <gasps> stupidly attractive. Corey's Bagar! having those moments of just like, yay! Can't, shouldn't look. You know what? Set me with my back facing them. I can't. <laughs> and as. Oh, those are some very attractive people. Why are they so pretty? I don't understand. And as your group uh, is having a wonderful dining experience at the Happy Beholder, the other three who had a less than stellar dining experience that they said was four star because, or that they said was five star because they felt a little threatened by it, make their way in. And as our group reconvenes, that is where we are going to call it for tonight's session. So. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who decided to stick with us and join us for tonight's wonderful game of Dungeons and Dragons. I had an absolute blast playing with all of these fantastic folk, but of course I always have a blast whenever any of these people are on the channel. Speaking of, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hello, I'm RJ, and you can catch me at rjustice282 on Twitter and Twitch, and also on Blue Sky. You can catch me here on Mondays as Kalem, the Shatterkai Wizard Fighter. Thursdays over at the Hype Goblins, where we play D&D 5e with a twist. It's all third-party content. I play Su Long Shen, who's a barbarian druid and the bestest boy there is. Saturday nights, you can catch us over at GGK, where we're doing Blades in the Dark. It's gonna be fun! Sunday mornings over at the Hype Goblins once again, where we do Pathfinder. And finally, <clears throat> this Sunday, Sunday night, in fact, we're doing our finale of Pillars of Ink. Come join us then, DanaeKeener.com. Hello, I'm LB Hackamup, and thank you for joining us tonight on this stream. I will be live next, next week on Monday, right here again. This weekend, I'll be gone at Gen Con. If you see me, come say hi. That's it for me, DanaeKeener.com. We're sorry. The number you have dialed is no longer in service. Please hang up. I'm Cyber. You can find me at twitch.tv slash cyberwolf1201. We, are, we will be finishing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom this week. Do not try to find me on X because I have just uninstalled it from my phone whenever it updated to X. You may find me on Blue Sky where I am at Cyber. I don't have anywhere else where I'm at. Except for here, DanaeKeener.com. Hello, and welcome to this outro experience. I'm Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on this channel. You can also find me on the website formerly known as Twitter uh, for the uh, next uh, foreseeable future. Uh, as at Danae Keener, I have a pinned tweet there um, that says all the things that I'm up to. DanaeKeener.com Hello, 
and if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, hi Acorns! How's it going? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the Indoor Adventurer. The showrunner here at twitch.tv slash Indoor Adventures. We do shows like this on Monday and Sunday, kind of, Sunday, uh, come back in three weeks. And that's when we'll have, or two weeks from now, I guess that's when we'll have Apocalypse Keys again. Uh, it's a great show. It's a great time. But I always, uh, you know, I have a great time with all of these folk. All of these, uh, all my TTRPG family. It's a good time. We're like a big old family here. Uh, if this is your first time joining, you can go to anywhere. Uh, audio casts are being made available for free, or you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all the VODs of each of the games that we've played up till this point. But for now, we are going to be going into our Patreon supported after show called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community. So if you have any questions for myself or any comments, concerns for myself or any of these individuals, again, feel free to join us. The Discord link is in the Twitch chat to the side or in the description of this video or audio cast down below. But we are going to be heading out. So I'd like to again say once again, thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by. Thank you to these players for putting up with all with my bullshit. And we'll see all of you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.